What's up guys, Mike here from Ecom Knives and this is episode number 8 of how to make a frame lock. As you can see we are left off in this stage right now. Last video we installed the backspacer and we tapped these holes. This video we're going to focus on cleaning this all up and making it look really nice. As you can see I have it somewhat assembled so we can check the fit to see if we need to make any adjustments in the stop location. So wide open it looks pretty good to me. I didn't want it flat and you certainly don't want the blade going up doing a, I think they refer to it as a as a dolphin or porpoising. Um, not my term. <laughs> but we want that kind of like curve in, in this design specifically. If you're making a Quaken or you're purposely making a straight handle knife that's a different story. I like a little bit of a curve. It gives it a nice, it gives it some eye appeal I guess I should say. Our stop location, as you can see, we are just recessed enough, but there is an issue. We are hitting the backspacer. As you can listen up, you hear that slap? That's not the stop pin. We're hitting the backspacer. So we need to check that out and clean that up a little bit as well. One thing to note with this style of design, as you can see the blade in there, you want to take your pinky and jam it in there as hard as you can all over the place and see if you can get any contact with that blade. If you can touch the blade you have to correct it or that will be an issue you could somebody could get hurt later on using your knife you don't want that. So now is the time to correct these issues so go over it and look for these things. Of course the first thing you want to do is make sure that your rest is perpendicular to your uh, your platen. Now, you guys seen how I've do, done this before. I have the adjustable DD work rest and it's just what I have. I'm not paid by Don or anything. It just works well. As you can see, there's no wobble in the one, two, three block. The whole grinder's moving. And I have it laying on its side. I find it a little bit easier to do it this way. If your grinder doesn't tilt, you could certainly do this while it's upright. You would just have to make sure you hold the knife in place while you're doing what you gotta do. As you can see what I'm doing is I'm not holding it in one spot. You want to keep it moving. Right? So I'm rocking it back and forth like this. Including the blade, I'm just going to slide along and follow that blade. Of course we still need this template, so you want to make sure you use the crappy side of the template first. Right? So I purposely set it up to slide along the back side. If this template is gone, put a piece of tape or you're going to scratch up that titanium a lot. And of course you want to use full motion. So I can start from the tip, follow the whole thing, and bring it all the way back down to the, to the back. You see? Just like that. I'm going to keep going and do this until I get about a 400 grit finish and change out the belt. If you're getting a rough pattern on the back, if you look real close, you see those lines? See right there. It should look more like this. That's because you're stopping. You want to do fluid motions. So, like that. And you see it cleaned it right up. You want to make it look like the backspacer disappears. This is how we're looking at the 120 grit stage. So basically all I did was get rid of the 60 grit scratches. As you can see, now of course before I go into this, when you're doing the spine, because there is no lock on the knife, 
you have to make sure you're holding it up against the stop pin. All right? Don't let this hand go limp and then try and profile it while it's wiggling around. Hold it tight, just like that in the open position, and then do your profiling. Otherwise, you're going to have dips and waves. It's going to look goofy. Okay? But it's little detail areas like this that is now flush. You see? This one's still going to get done. Uh, so I have a bit more work to do. Uh, and even back here where the lock face is, because the lock face is going to be cut a little shallower than that. You see the line? And see where the actual lock face is. Okay? So yeah, we, we ground into the lock face just a little bit. No big deal. I accounted for that. Make sure you have room before you do that. Otherwise, you're going to start all over again. Okay? Alright, guys. You can see I had a... Uh, I could get to the curves on the inside by using this wheel. That's why I like having the, the work rest way out in the edge like this. Uh, it's just use what you got basically guys. Could you do this free handed? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, but it's just easier to get consistent results when you have a work rest like this to get your, your 90 degrees, your, your perpendicular finish. Now this is an X30 Norax belt, so it's about a 400 grit, give or take, finish. And as you can see here are the results. Like I said, you want that backspacer to absolutely vanish. And of course along the spine of the knife, so we'll check all these surfaces as well. Nice and flush. Nice and flush here and everything just kind of flows very nicely okay so now what we want to do is we don't want to detach this because there is a bit of wiggle in a number 44 drill and a clearance hole so I'm going to take my little punch here and just kind of pop out that pivot which is now gone forever there it is and I'm going to pop out the other pivot the main pivot kind of drop all the bearings out of it and now I have my blade separate, which I can contour separately. And I'm going to take my pivot and put it back in. Now, be careful when you do this, guys, because you will have some flex here. So you don't want to really press on it, get on it. We just want to hold it nice and even to clean up this choil here. Okay, so that's a little trick I learned. So we'll do that. And then with the blade, I'm just going to get a small wheel and clean this up. Kind of round off the flipper tab and everything. Of course, you see how we cut into the lock face, but that's okay because our lock face is going to come back to here. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully we didn't go a little too crazy. Like I said, check your design before you do what I did. As you can see here, guys, I didn't take apart my work rest setup. You don't want to change anything until you get everything done. Okay? Because even if you go to set this back up, there are chances that it, you could have set it up just a little bit wrong. So before you break down your setup, we're going to go in and get this done here. Now just because I have to hang off the edge of the platen, I still have a little bit where I can hold on to here. So, I mean, yeah, I'm hanging 75% off, but that's okay. Because I could just kind of rock it in like this and get that finger choil cleaned up. And there we go guys, you can see the finger choil is nice and cleaned up. Uh, this is a 220 grit belt. I'm going to jump it up to, uh, to the 400-600 area to match the rest of the knife. Now we have to clean up the blade itself, but you don't want to scratch up this finish. I mean, yeah, this is right off the surface grinder, we could always grind it again. But we don't want to scratch it and gouge it all up. So get yourself some of this blue tape. I'll try to do this through the camera. You want to make sure you get all the way down to the flipper tab like that. Okay, then, then take an albatross blade that you screwed up, like this one. And just kind of rub that on there. To help break the edges of the tape. See, and then you could just kind of peel it away. There we go. I've selected a small wheel that'll fit where we want it in the choils. Okay, I know it's kind of dark, don't worry, I'll change the angle. 
I just wanted you to see the overall view. Now I don't have anything that goes on the other side so I can lay the grinder on its side, which is the ideal situation, so I'm going to have to use it vertical, which is not that bad. But you still want to take your one, two, three block and you want to check that you're square. Okay, so I've gone through and I've made sure that I'm square. I could tighten everything down. So now everything will be perpendicular on the blade. Okay, I'm just going to go in gently. And just enough to clean it up. See there, we still have a spot that needs to be cleaned. But it doesn't take a whole lot, guys, so don't go crazy. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. There you can see it there. Compared to the underside. Now I'm not worried about this blade because it's going to get ground anyway. Just the back and front of the flipper tab. So now I'll move from this and go up and over the flipper tab gently. Jeez, feels like I'm all over the place in this video. <laughs> okay, so flipper tab is done, brought up to the same finish as our spine, our 600 grit, let's call it, 400 grit, whatever it was. The X30 belt. I'm not sure of the exact grit, but it's around that neighborhood. So we can take this tape off. We don't need this anymore. Of course, we have all this is nice and profiled and contoured. So what do we have left? We have to go inside, take that backspacer out. And this is why we didn't bring the backspacer to the final dimension just yet. Uh, we have to take the backspacer out and do the inside. And then that'll be it for this video. So we got the backspacer out, and obviously we don't want to scratch up this nice clean surface that we just just finished. So we're going to slide around on its side, and I'm going to work off this wheel. Now we are hitting right now as it sits, so I know I'm going to have to take a decent amount out of here. This is a 120 grip belt, so I'm going to do a little bit of, of uh, fine tuning while I'm cleaning it up. All right, that'll do it for the backspacer. As you can see, if it'll focus, there we go. Nice 600 grit satin. I put a little bit of a hollow on the front, so if you hit it, it's not gonna hurt your finger. And on the inside, the same finish. Okay, so the backspacer is done this way, but as you can see, we still have to clean it up this way. But we're gonna do that a little later in the build. So let's put it together and see what it looks like. All right, fellas, we have the knife back together. This is like from when we started the video. Except now it's nice and cleanly profiled. You can see there, this is the little hollow I put in the backspacer. The backspacer itself with that nice flush mount all the way around into the handle, everything. And the only thing we didn't touch is the blade itself because that's going to get ground. If this is a little wonky, you can, of course, go and grind it. That's up to you. Now, we also want to check operation. Let me hold all that. The bearings are flopping around. I'll hold this tight so you're not hearing the pivot in the bearing. It sounds like it's hitting, but it's not. I can feel it up here in the stop pin. And the way you can tell, too, well, let me squeeze this is you can take a little dye if you want and dye the inside of the backspacer. Of course, it's way too dark for you to see that. Let me see if you can see it this way. Mm, oh, oh, maybe there, maybe there. There you go. You could dye the inside. Whoa, focus. You could dye the inside a little bit and just kind of flip the blade around and see where you end up. You know, just kind of slam it around and it'll show right away in the die if you're hitting that backspacer or it's scratching around or something like that. At this point, the backspacer is pretty thin, 
So if I have to adjust it, I would just take a little bit off this blade. But we're, we're talking millimeters, if that, and, and we don't need to. We're close. We're very close. So I might die and just double check. Because the last thing you want to do is to have your edge hitting your backspacer. If you get an aggressive user that loves to really wrist flick the crap out of his knife, the knife should be able to hold up to that. Okay? If it's hitting the backspacer because they're wailing it with their wrist, that's on you, not them. So, that's it for this one, guys. On the next episode, we're going to come back and we're going to cut out the lock bar. Alright? We're going to do it in two steps. One step is the big cut, and then later on we're going to release the lock bar and do that later. And there's a reason why I do that. So, that's it for this video, guys. This is Mike here from Meekum Knives, and I'll catch you on the next one.